Okay, so, so your second play. So you've written one play, mm -hmm. and it's been great, and it's a really, really well-structured play. It's got some great, you know, stuff for actors to do. Now what? Now I was like, okay, that's a lot harder than I thought it was. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to be a little less judgmental about the 85%. Mm -hmm. um, and then Harry Rintoul came to me. He had seen Blade at the festival. He uh, had just started a company in Winnipeg called Theatre Projects Manitoba, trying to fit in that, trying to make a place for Manitoban playwrights, mm -hmm. right? Because at that point we had MTC. We had PTE, and I think Kim McCall was there at that point and was doing Canadian work, like Wendy Lill, The Fighting Days, and uh, I think Patrick Friesen's The Shunning, things like that. But there was no sort of forum for local playwrights. Mm -hmm. And so Harry's like, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make a theater. It's going to be called Theater Projects Manitoba, and we're going to do just Manitoban playwrights. Because, you know, if you build it, they will come, right? Yeah. Like, it's true. Like, you just... It's like Dan, Daniel McIver says, if you want to write a play, rent a theater. Yeah. And then you've got a deadline and you'll yeah. write the play because you have the theater rented and it, mm -hmm. that's just the way we need deadlines and we need a place. Yeah. We need a place to say our words. Mm -hmm. So Harry had seen Blade, came to me and said that, um, that was great. I would like to commission you to write a play for Theater Projects Manitoba. And I was like, okay, about what? And he's like, I don't care anything whatever you want to write about and I was like okay not knowing that how how constraining freedom can be right mm. and so I wrote Blade I, I wrote Blade I wrote Job's wife um, mm. for Harry and uh, didn't know how long it took to write a play didn't know anything so I just wrote it it was mm. I was very because I was so ignorant in the early days of my playwriting I did a lot of things that I didn't know I shouldn't be able to do <laughs> like mm -hmm. you know knock off a play in this period of time and mm -hmm. yeah it was it was great and because I was still smarting from the don't you feel the responsibility to be the voice of your people you right. know stuff mm -hmm. I was like yeah oh yeah well uh, I'll give you the voice of my people I'm gonna put the creator into my next play. Do <laughs> 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 so, you want to yeah. see Indians on stage? I'll give you Indians on yeah, stage. Yeah. No kidding. And you know what? I think sometimes actually when you're young, it's important to just, you know, break the rules and, and, and not know things. So have freedom. I think sometimes you can get to an age where you do know a lot about, you learn about you know, the way things are supposed to be structured and do all this work and then it can be stifling. Did you find it, I mean, did you find a certain freedom when you're writing that play, or did you find? Uh... Yeah, that was okay. very free. My in the early days, again the Winnipeg scene being so nurturing and like you can write and you seem to love theater, so go ahead and write. I also got commissioned by Manitoba Association of Playwrights. They did this thing, this project called Short Shots, and they would commission right. writers to write like ten minute pieces, right. which was. You know, every blessing has its curse inside it, right? So mm -hmm. I wrote a short piece called Video, which is about a young woman who gets into her wedding dress every day and watches the video of her wedding um, every day because it's better than the real thing was. And uh, That's great. Yeah, it's a great, fun piece. And then because there's so few roles for women, certainly at that time, Lots of women, lots of my girlfriends were picking it up and using it for an audition piece, and then it was it was traveling right. out. So other artistic directors were seeing it in auditions and going, well, that's interesting. Where'd you get that piece? And they're mm. like, oh, it's Yvette Nolan's piece, which is really, really cool and, mm. a, and a great way to get your work out. That's brilliant. It is, isn't it? Yeah, get a good monologue to some actors. It's get them auditioning Actually, Michael Canada. Scholar told me when I met him last year in Saskatoon, He's like, I got into theater school with your monologue from Blade, the one we just talked about. Yeah, 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 because yeah. it's a great monologue. He got yeah. into theater, and I'm like, that's so great. Yeah, yeah. Can I give you something new to read? <laughs> <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, uh, here's my latest. That's right. There that's like go. 22 years old now, So, um, <laughs> and you're not young anymore. <laughs> Yeah, but I what what the you know writing the short form did for me. And Daniel David Moses has said to me like, you could have a whole book of those short pieces. Like mm -hmm. you seem to be really like, I think 
it was a backhanded compliment, like really mastered that short form. And mm -hmm. I think he means that my lung plays are like, <laughs> not so much. Well, no, I'm not crazy about, it's like you said, once you start learning what you're supposed to do, mm -hmm. it starts to feel like the, like the cage is getting really small. Mm -hmm. But those short plays, I have like, I was looking at my resume after we talked mm. and I've got like a, a probably a third of my plays are these mm. short form 10, 15 minute plays mm -hmm. that the whole world is contained in that, it, the whole world of that play is contained mm. in that short play. And then you end up with people going, so are you going to expand it? Is this part of a larger thing? It's like, mm. no, that's actually it. That's it, yeah. That's the I, whole piece. I've always found that's way harder to do. I think... And this, call me crazy, but I think Shakespeare had it great. He could have as many actors as he wanted. The show could be seven hours long. He could add in scenes that go nowhere. And I nothing. know. But if you were to do a 15 minute play, that to me is really hard. I love it. I yeah. love it. And back in the day when I was like uh, being allowed to do anything in Winnipeg, which of course I only recognize as a, now as a grown up, um, that I that I was allowed given so much in Winnipeg. Right. One of the things I did was uh, was a Shakespeare was a a four person Othello for Popular Theater Lines of Manitoba. Mm -hmm. They did had this program called Testing Ground, and we could right. make short works to do in mm -hmm. it. And I did I did um, a four person Othello, and everybody was either black or Indian, hmm. and uh, and my Othello was a woman. And it was cross gender, like so. Way before yeah. I knew All what I was stuff. doing, I was, yeah. and I had, you know, distilled it down to ten minutes—a ten-minute four-person wow. Othello because I wanted to. Yeah. And then we put it up, and it was fun, and it was great. Yeah. So, like those short, I love the short form really a lot. Yeah. So, a third of my plays are those short yeah. forms. A third are probably what I would consider to be full plays, even yeah. though. I hate the interval, so I don't write, I tend to not write anything with an interval. Really? I hate it. Why do you hate the interval? I can't, I don't want to let the audience out. I know. I don't want them to have, I, I hate being at the bar at an interval as a patron and hearing, mm -hmm. so what do you think? <laughs> it's like, how can you know? We're only halfway mm. through. Unless it's like Almighty Voice and His Wife, right. which where you need 20 minutes to switch over the set because you're changing yeah, okay. everything. That I buy. But I, but I hate I hate re letting the audience out. I want to control their experience from start to finish, and then they can go out and mm. hate it or love it. I agree with you. I have, however, been pressured by theaters because they want to sell drinks, and that makes money. Oh, what do you that's say? That's the them? really that's the best reason to write an interval into your play, isn't it? <laughs> so the theater can sell drinks. Well. And my wife said, my wife who doesn't work in theater, she says, and some people have to pee. Some some people have to pee. I know, but what? you know what? People go to the movies and they sit for two hours. I know. People go to La Page and they sit for eight hours with two intervals. I know. People go to the opera. I people know. went to like the Philip Glass, Einstein on the beach that was like 150 years older. I mean, 150. Um, years long. It was how long right. was the Einstein on the beach? Eight oh, hours or something? Why do that? To people? No interval. Oh, you're joking. No, you oh, could no, come no. and go as you please. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, better. People didn't. They were like, I know people who said I couldn't move. I just there. Great. For the whole eight hours. So I think we can do it. I just I agree with you. I think that there's just something that's happening to your emotional. There's a, I call it like a, a, a tensor band or a string. You know that if you let it go slack for that period of time, then it's just you have to pick it up again. It's like you have to start it all over again. And it forces that false thing in the middle of the play, mm -hmm. like like a cliffhanger kind of thing. You have to yeah. give them something yeah. in the essentially the middle of the play. So they don't leave. So they'll come back. Yeah, I know. And that's not the way yeah. I find that plays are actually structured. Yeah, or it's frustrating if you're forced to do it when... The play itself isn't naturally going there. Yeah, my uh, least successful play, hmm. I think, is the one that has an interval. Right. Right. Well, good for you for convincing the artistic directors to not sell alcohol. Good for you. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not big enough. I don't have enough power yet. <laughs> one day. I, it's very smart. It's very wise. Because I agree. It's like there should be an emotional 
I think it's more emotionally satisfying. I do too.